What's it like owning an M1 MacBook Pro for over a month? Here's my thoughts. Welcome, I'm Taylor Brower and I'm a software engineer living in Texas and I have had the M1 MacBook Pro for over a month and a half now. I ordered it on November 10th, the same day that it was announced, and I got it at my door on November 18th. Overall, I love this machine. I've used it pretty much every day since I got it, and I really love it. I'm gonna go over the things that I really like about this machine. Then I'm gonna talk about areas of improvement that I'd like to see in future Apple Silicon devices that will just really make this the perfect laptop. And I'm gonna share my thoughts with you and hopefully that will give you an idea of what it really is like to own an M1 MacBook Pro at this stage in its life cycle. So let's check it out. I'm gonna start off with the speed of this M1 MacBook Pro. It's fast. And I mean really, really fast. It's incredible. This machine is only beaten by two other Apple devices, the Mac Mini 16 gig and the monstrous Mac Pro, which starts at $6,000 US. And this placement is based on the Xcode benchmark, which I'll have linked in the description below so that you can try it out yourself. Basically what it does is it runs a large compile on Xcode and then it benchmarks the time that it takes to complete that compilation. And as you can see, my exact configuration places third in the chart, only beaten out by the Mac Mini and the 28 core Mac Pro. That is just incredible for the size and the power efficiency of this machine. Next, I wanna talk about the battery life. Apple claims that the M1 MacBook Pro can last 20 hours on a single charge. Now, I haven't really tested that and benchmarked my computer because I use it all the time. And there's other channels that you can watch that have benchmarked that sort of thing and you can kind of get an estimate of what the real battery life is. But what I can tell you is that compared to my work computer, which is a 2018 MacBook Pro 15 inch, the M1 blows that out of the water in terms of battery life and everything else really, but in battery life it blows it out of the water. And that 2018, MacBook Pro doesn't have bad battery life either. That, that thing has good battery life. I can easily get eight hours in one go with the M1 MacBook Pro and still have plenty of battery life left over. Now, realistically, I'm not using my M1 on battery all that much. I typically have it docked in so that I can use my monitor and my keyboard, sit at my desk. So it's pretty much constantly charging. Here is a graph of the standby time when I close the lid at night and just let the laptop sit. You can see between the times of 11 p.m. to 10 a.m. and it really isn't sucking that much power down. And then here's another chart of more of a longer spread of time so you can kind of get an idea of what my battery life graph is for this particular machine. Okay, the next one is big, app compatibility. What has the software experience been like in the month and a half that I've had this machine? So let me tell you, when I first bought this machine, I was taking a big risk because Apple was shifting to a completely new architecture. It was not using the previous x86 architecture any longer. App compatibility was a big concern. I went in under the assumption that I wasn't gonna be able to use half my computer until developers were able to code for the new architecture. And I knew that going in, those were my assumptions, and I was pleasantly surprised and very wrong. Because when I started using this computer, Chrome, WebStorm, IntelliJ, VS Code, Photoshop, Lightroom, DaVinci Resolve, iTerm, Homebrew, all of the programs that I typically use were working. And None of them were Apple Silicon native at the time. They were all running through Rosetta 2 and they were just working phenomenally. The only app that I really had an issue with at the start was Chrome. It was slow, buggy, and it just drained battery life like crazy. And I had to switch to Safari for a couple days, which 
kind of put me out of my comfort zone because I have all my bookmarks and passwords in Chrome. I have a lot invested in Chrome. I didn't really want to s switch to Safari. But after about a week, all these issues were resolved and it was working fine. So since then, now, WebStorm, IntelliJ, VS Code, DaVinci Resolve, and Docker all work natively on the Apple Silicon, either in a stable build or in a technical preview build. I recently just upgraded WebStorm, and let me tell you, it is fast, like amazingly fast. I've never seen WebStorm perform this well. It is really incredible stuff. The app transition has been phenomenal. Okay, so now I've talked about things that I really like about this machine. So what about the things that I wanna see improved? Okay, so the number one thing is this webcam. I mean, what is this webcam? It's a 720p webcam, which absolutely has no place in professional hardware. And I mean, look at it, it's, it's terrible. It is so bad. And I really hope that Apple puts at least 1080p webcams in their entry level devices like the MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, and the 21 inch iMac in the next iteration and at least have a 4K webcam in the 16 inch MacBook Pro and the 27 inch iMac. I can understand that Apple really wanted to focus on the processor in this device, but I mean, come on, that's a webcam. It's just, it's not good. Improvement number two, these ports. Two ports is challenging. I have to get creative with selecting these ports. In the beginning, it was kind of a challenge, but I basically figured it out and I have a hub that has USBs, the SD card, I can charge the laptop, and it also has a HDMI port and an ethernet port. I use that in one of the ports. And then in the other one, I use my display port to USB connection so that I can kind of connect to my monitor and have that solid connection. So one thing that I did notice is that I get this weird glitchiness with the hub if I connect it to the HDMI, where when the computer goes to sleep, the monitor has like a green tint. And I've tried this with multiple monitors, the green tint happens, and the only way I can get it off is if I put the computer to sleep, wake it back up, and then sometimes it's off. Now, this seems to be attributed to some immature drivers with the Thunderbolt ports or the USB 4 ports, whatever they call them. I don't think they're quite as good as the Intel ports because I can do the same connection on my 15 inch MacBook Pro and I get no issues. Now, what's interesting is when I connect on the M1 MacBook Pro, I have the option for a higher refresh rate on this monitor than I do on my 15 inch MacBook Pro and the 15 inch MacBook Pro has a dedicated AMD graphics card. So that's a little weird. I hope that Apple gets that sorted out and I would like to see at least four ports going forward, please. <laughs> so those are my thoughts on the M1 MacBook Pro after owning it for a month and a half. This computer is monstrously powerful. It's small, it has incredible battery life, and it is just a joy to use. If you're in the market for a new laptop, I cannot recommend this laptop enough. I'm Taylor Brower, and this has been my look into the MacBook Pro after one month and a half of ownership. Thank you so much for watching, and if you liked the video, please leave a like. If you wanna see more content, please subscribe. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.